My name's William Morgan. I'm a director of the Linkerd project, which is a title I find a little bit funny, but we, we had to make a we had to give me a title because um, I'm not a maintainer, but I still spend a lot of my time speaking about Linkerd. Um, and so today I'm going to give you kind of uh, the update. Uh, on the open source project. Uh, I put a couple words up here. They're slightly different from, I think, what was on the schedule, but these are more representative of reality. We, <laughs> we submitted the, the talk for this, you know, many, many months ago. And if you saw my, like, keynote video, I don't know if, do they, did they do that today or do they do that tomorrow? Not today. Okay, well, when you see my 60-second, like, keynote video, probably tomorrow during the project updates, I had to record that also you know, like in April or something. And so it's like, well, I'll just give you my my best guess as to what's going to be real by November. But, you know, uh, I, I got pretty close. Okay, so without further ado, here we are. Thank you, True Believers, for coming out. Um, I'm going to do a quick ad before we, we, we get into the, the content. We actually have a whole bunch of Linkerd and Linkerd-related talks here at KubeCon. Everything on the left side, which is grayed out to the point where you can barely read it, has already passed, so there's no point, you know, hopefully you made it to some of those. Uh, tomorrow we've got a couple talks. This is the last kind of Linkerd related one today, but tomorrow we've got one about um, multi-zone clusters. That's yeah, semi-Linkerd related. We'll talk about topology aware routing and kind of how, how Linkerd handles that um, and some of the pros and cons. Uh, we've got a tutorial about gateway API, also semi-related. We've got kind of a basic introduction to, to TLS and mutual TLS. And then we've got another gateway API talk. And then on Friday, if you're here Friday morning, you can come see me get yelled at as I, you know, shake my fist in the air about um, open source and probably anger a lot of people so that should make for a good time so if you hate if you hate what i say today definitely come on 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 friday all right oh and there's a qr code if you didn't see that um, which links to a blog post which has in turn links to schedule things so um i'll give you three seconds to snap that two one done all right so here we are linkerd how many of you have been to a linkerd maintainer update, like project update like this at KubeCon in the past? Three, four people? Okay, five? Wonderful. So that means many of you uh, are new to my particular brand of down-home folksy humor that so many people seem to appreciate. Uh, that was supposed to be sarcastic. Uh, so Linkerd is a service mesh. I'm not going to spend too much time. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to spend any time talking about what that means. Um, so. Uh, Hopefully, you at least know enough to navigate from there. Um, we've been in production for eight years at companies around the world. Uh, big, healthy kind of community, lots of stars and contributors. Um, we were the first service mesh to achieve graduation status back in, I don't remember when it was, 2021, I think. A um, whole set of logos. We haven't updated this logo slide for probably four or five years, so... Um, you know, there's probably more. I, I think our job, so when people think about the service mesh, you know, kind of a lot of people treat it as like a networking layer or they, or they treat it as, you know, they start getting into into proxies and, and things like that. To me, I like to take kind of a job-centric approach. And I think Linkerd's job fundamentally is to give platform engineers Right, so that's our audience. It's not not the networking audience. It's not the network engineers. It's not really the security engineers, but it's give the platform engineers um, the tools that they need to create a secure, reliable, and observable platform on top of Kubernetes. So if you are a platform engineer um, or adjacent to one, then you are in our target audience. And if you're not, then we may be useful to you, but we're not um, kind of directly trying to solve your problems. And you'll notice I didn't really say anything other than like, you know, we're trying to help you make a better platform. So I don't ultimately see this as a, as a networking model or as a security tool. I see this as a platform tool. Okay, I've got two slides about kind of like Linkerd versus everyone else. I, sometimes I've been really aggressive with these slides and I've like, you know, yelled at other projects. In this case, I'm, I'm taking a, a moment to be mature. Um, so what are the two things that I think distinguish Linkerd from other projects? Uh, the first is we try and keep it simple, and we have this whole 
uh, set of design principles and this whole ethos that we follow. I've given a, given a bunch of uh, talks about this. Um, I don't have, you know, kind of the supporting slides if I really wanted to go into simplicity and talk about the Rich Hickey talk and all those things. Um, but the idea is like, okay, we want to keep it this simple. Service mesh is notorious for being a complicated, you know, confusing uh, kind of piece of technology to work with. So how do we, you know, how do we not do that? How do we make it better? You know, we've got a couple principles. I think actually I'd love to update this. I think we've got kind of like a, a, a more refined sense of this. And so I have a blog post in the, in the works about, you know, what really are the design principles um, that have worked for us over the past, you know, eight plus years in, um, of, of fighting against complexity. But, you know, just work, right? So like that's a big one out of the box. We shouldn't require you to change your application to make Linkerd work. We shouldn't even require you to do any config, at least to get started, right? And then when you add you know, kind of functionality and you need to involve config, that config should scale kind of sublinearly with the, with the power that you're getting. Now, you know, when we start talking about things like the gateway API, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know that we really stay true to that principle, but there are sacrifices and compromises uh, we're, we're making um, for, for reasons that I think are ultimately good for you. But that's, this is the, the, the philosophy, even if we don't always live up to it in every, um, in every instance. Don't be greedy, you know, don't, uh, you know, let's, let's, no reason to consume more resources than, than we need to, okay, that's good. Uh, you know, remove operational complexity, kind of similar to um, the, the, the simplicity theme. Can we make Linkerd something that when it's, you know, when it breaks and it's three in the morning and you're, you have to like wake up and see what's going on. You can understand what's happening. You can have a mental model. Um, you can you can debug the problems. You know, uh, it's not this. It shouldn't be this complex black box um, that you can never you know open up and that does some magic stuff. It should be something that you can understand as a as a human, even a 3 a.m. human. Uh, and then finally, security. You know, we want to make it secure out of the box. So that that should be the default. We shouldn't require you to do a bunch of work um, to, to to make it secure. Okay, does this seem crazy so far? Anyone object to these philosophical principles upon which my entire career is based? No? Okay. No one, does anyone want to take a stand for complexity? Did you raise your hand right there? No? Okay, all right. I got my eye on you. Okay, so that's kind of the philosophy side um, on the um, kind of implementation side. Uh, the thing that makes us really unique uh, is we, you know, we don't use Envoy as a proxy. We build these things that we call micro proxies, not my favorite term, but kind of, you know, it does 20% of what a full-fledged proxy does. Um, so it didn't really seem fair to call it a proxy. Uh, we build them in Rust, so we get a bunch of nice security benefits. Uh, security first, right? We avoid a whole class of memory uh, safety vulnerabilities, which is really, really nice. Um, Rust is super fast. That's awesome. We've got, we get access to this great um, network stack. So if you're into like asynchronous network programming, all the cool stuff seems to be happening in, in the world of Rust these days. But I think, you know, if I tie this back to the previous slide, we want the proxy to be an implementation detail, not this operational burden. So we don't want you to think about this, the fact that there's a proxy there. You shouldn't, it shouldn't be something that you're tuning and, and, and like worrying about as a separate entity, you know, as, as much as possible. Obviously, there's always little exceptions, right? There's always weird services that are going to require a little effort. But by and large, it shouldn't be like a separate project. Okay, so that's like my introduction, my philosophical introduction to Linkerd. Let's talk about what has happened uh, since Chicago, which was the last KubeCon, I'm pretty sure, the uh, last KubeCon uh, North America. So it's about a year ago. Okay, so we released, gosh, I think we released two, uh, 2.9 releases of, of Linkerd since then. So I'll go through them one by one. We introduced Linkerd 2.15, which adds mesh expansion. Um, and adds kind of in a limited way adds Spiffy Inspire support. So mesh expansion means uh, you can run the Linkerd uh, micro proxy on VMs and on you know uh, other uh, on bare metal too. You know anything outside of of Kubernetes as long as it's Linux. We don't have Windows in here yet. Um, but so if you've got legacy kind of like Linux workloads and you don't want to jam them into Kubernetes, then we can at least mesh them for you and give you all the you know mutual TLS and 
uh, rate limiting and retries and all the other features. Uh, identity is bootstrapped through Spiffy and Spire. So in Kubernetes, we've kind of like always, oh, I forgot I have this clicker, I'm really mobile now. Um, in Kubernetes, uh, in the cluster itself, we've avoided Spiffy and Spire because we have other ways to bootstrap identity. Kubernetes has like gives us a bunch of tools, so we didn't want to introduce anything else. Once you're outside of Kubernetes, well, now you're in the Wild West, right? Now it's like an arbitrary VM, you know, running arbitrary code. Um, so uh, Spire and Spiffy actually turn out to be perfect. Like that's that's a problem that they solve. So that gives us the ability to have identity for these VMs, and we tie that into the, the mutual TLS certificates. Uh, we have this fancy new CRD that allows you to represent VMs um, and, you know, some other niceties. So, uh, you know, the, the theme of this was basically moving beyond Kubernetes or extending beyond Kubernetes. The control plane still has to run in Kubernetes, right? And, and I think that's always going to be the case for Linkerd. We've got too many um, kind of assumptions baked in and, and too many bits of Kubernetes that we rely on. In fact, that's like an explicit choice for us. Um, to really ever have the control plane outside of Kubernetes, but the data plane can extend beyond it. Make sense so far? All right, uh, 2.16 came uh, later, and if I were being frank and transparent, I would say this was kind of like a cleanup release. You know, of course, I like to talk about the extra features and stuff. IPv6 we added here. We added a cool mode for policy. If you use authorization policies, um, you know, we've got this whole very... Uh, complex and, um, oh, no, not complex. Well, it kind of is because it's based on the Gateway API, but we've got this whole powerful and um, uh, uh, sophisticated system, I guess, for, for doing um, authorization policies, which basically means if I'm service A and I want to talk to service B, like, is that allowed, right? Normally, Linkerd will do everything possible to make that happen, but you can put in policies that say, no, that's not allowed. Or you can say, A is only allowed to talk to this one gRPC method on B or this one HTTP route, things like that. Um, so, you know, we, you, you turn those policies on and, and things might break. So we added an audit mode. Um, but really the majority effort that went into here was kind of redoing our uh, retries and timeouts logic to be, uh, and also metrics, including per route metrics to be on the native uh, gateway API types. So, uh, how many people are using, I should have asked this at the beginning, how many people here are using Linkerd today? Ah, healthy number, okay. Uh, how many of you are using service profiles? None of you, wow, okay, well great. In that case, we're just gonna deprecate them. <laughs> That'll save us some time and energy. No, we're not, so, you know, as part of this, we decided we're not gonna deprecate the service profiles. We're kind of the, the, the first, one of the first CRDs that we introduced, and we tried to be very judicious in introducing CRDs, um, and that allowed us to do per route metrics and, and things like that. Um, now that we have the Gateway API, we're kind of like moving more of our config surface area over to that, um, but we're gonna keep supporting service profiles basically for eternity, I think, at this point. Um, and so we, we have, the point of all this is we did a lot of work for 2.16, but really the majority of that was at this kind of like cleanup thing to get parity between the features we had supported with service profiles and the features that we now support with the Gateway API. Is there anyone here who would like me to explain what the, oh gosh, what the Gateway API is? Okay, one, is anyone who would like me to not explain it so they can stay pure? Okay, well, that's, that's two versus two here, so we may need a tiebreaker. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll spend 30 seconds narrating. Is, wait, is there anyone here from the Gateway API project? All right, I've got perfect freedom. Now, we're not recording this, right? So the, ga <laughs> um, the Gateway API, eh, so you start out in the olden days, we had Ingress, right, as a resource in Kubernetes. And Ingress was like supposed to represent, tra you know, how we configure traffic coming in the cluster. Of course, the problem with Ingress was that it was a, a very minimalist type and it couldn't express all the many, many things that we wanted to express. So pretty much every Ingress controller had its own set of CRDs. Okay, that's not great. So let's build the API 
that can allow us to, you know, to actually capture that so we have a Kubernetes native API that can support the wide range of ingress functionality. Okay, so we do that and we call it the gateway API. Now, it turns out that the best way to do that is to have a whole bunch of CRDs and to have them kind of relate to each other. And so you end up with, you know, a CR CRD that represents this thing and it references another CRD that represents this thing and it represents another, references another CRD that represents this. And so you end up with like these series of resources. And you can imagine, you know, each of these is like, you know, a, a row in a database table, basically, and you're like doing joins across them. Um, so very sophisticated, very powerful. It actually did accomplish its goal, and it was pretty well designed, you know, and so we started using that because we also needed, you know, in, in Linkerd, way back in Linkerd 2.12, we were like, we need a, a configuration to represent like a slice of traffic. How do we refer to a whole set of, you know, how do we refer to just HTTP requests that are to this route and that have, you know, this source or something, right? That's a kind of a thorny um, uh, configuration like design challenge to solve. Well, it turns out the Gateway API had already solved it. Okay, great, so we started using that and then other people realized, hey, a lot of what's happening with the Gateway API, you know, which was designed originally to solve ingress problems actually makes sense for mesh. And then there's this whole working group called Gamma in all caps which was basically, you know, how do we, and it's still going on, I think, um, how do we adjust the gateway API? How do we tune it so that it can represent not just ingress cases, but also mesh use cases? So the past couple of releases, we've been kind of heavily m moving more and more Linkerd functionality, especially the new stuff, to be represented by the gateway API. Now, that's, that's good and it's bad. It's good in that those types are already on your clusters. So, you know, unless you're running an ancient... Kubernetes version, you have gateway API types, so we're not inventing anything new, and that's great because I don't want to be on the hook for inventing those types. Now, it's bad in that we're kind of, uh, I think we're kind of exhibiting the, we're at the very boundaries of what a human being can plausibly create and understand in terms of like YAML blobs that reference each other. Because as soon as you start going down this path and you do things the, the right way with the gateway API, you end up with like a whole bunch of CRDs and they all talk about each other. And if you get the thing wrong, then like they just silently fail and it just gets, you know, more complicated. So I, I think it's great. And that's kind of why we're doing it. And I think it's kind of the, the, the future right now. My personal opinion is that we're kind of in this like painful state where we're asking you well, I, and anyone who's relying on the Gateway API, we're asking you to create these types which are rich and powerful and expressive, but are also kind of hard to use at scale. So there we go. That's my explanation of the Gateway API. Um, there's no, I don't think there's an escape for anyone at this point. This, you know, the doors have been shut, so we're gonna have to figure out how to live with it. Um, okay, so that brings me to Linkerd 2.17. So 2.16 and 2.15 are actually out today. 2.17, there's an edge release out as of like last week that basically has this functionality. We haven't gotten the docs polished. Um, we have a little more testing to do, so we're probably like two weeks out from having an official 2.17 announcement. But the features in here are super, super cool. So we spent 2.16 kind of like doing some cleanup and, and you know, um, fixing some windows, some broken windows. Now with 2.17, we actually uh, get to, you know, flex our, our feature muscles a bit. Is this, do I only have 10 minutes remaining? Boy, I'm really dragging this out. Um, Okay, so yeah, so let me keep going because this is this is a fun part. I shouldn't have wasted all that time on those other old releases. Uh, egress metrics, egress controls, that's traffic leaving your cluster. I've got a slide about each of these. Rate limiting, super cool. Federated service, actually federated services is probably my favorite feature in this. Um, okay, so let's talk about egress. So traffic leaves your cluster. Turns out lots of traffic probably leaves your cluster. You don't necessarily know what it is. So the very first thing we want to do is give you the ability to capture and get metrics for all the traffic that's leaving your cluster. So how do you do that? This little YAML block on the left is your, you know, your, the equivalent of a, of a YAML hello world, I guess. It's like, you know, only eight lines or whatever, 12 lines, um, that basically says, hey, Linkerd, I actually want you to, to ca capture metrics for all traffic leaving the cluster. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now, if you want us to look at the TLS, sniff the TLS SNI header and actually track metrics through uh, by, by host name for your TLS traffic. 
well, then you have to do this more complicated thing over here on the right that it says, oh, and by the way, if you see traffic that's going to 443, then let's treat that as a TLS route and you know do metrics uh, based on the host name. So what's cool about this is that it does not require any changes from any of your applications. You can drop this in today with that edge release and you will start getting metrics and you will be shocked and horrified by all the traffic that's leaving your cluster, probably. Okay, but that's not all. So once you can measure it, of course, you want to control it. What is the point of being on the platform team if you can't control what other people are doing? Like, finally, we've been powerless all our lives, and now we have a taste of real power. So let's, let's use that power to control egress traffic. Um, so if you want to disallow all traffic leaving the cluster, just clamp it down. Okay, that's that thing on the left. You can kind of do that with... Um, I think you can do that with CNI, like network policies, I think. Um, but now we want to allow traffic and we want to allow it to not a CIDR or a set of IP addresses or a port. Well, I guess it is a port, but we want to allow it to uh, a, a host name. And so that block of YAML on the right, which uh, I forgot to colorify, so you'll just have to do that um, by yourself. You can see there's an HTTP bin there underneath the, the host names. Um, section there. And, and for those of you who are astute in the ways of Gateway API, you'll notice that these TLS routes are actually Gateway API objects. So this thing on the left, the egress network, that's Linkerd specific. The thing on the right is Gateway API. All right, does that make sense so far? All right, rate limiting. Um, this is, <laughs> if you're familiar with uh, what this looks like in Istio, this is like <laughs> about one uh, thousandth of the, the size here. So rate limiting, you know, is basically, hey, I've got a fragile service or I've got a service where I just don't want too much traffic hitting it. Here's what it looks like. Give me, you know, limit it to a thousand or a hundred requests per second in this case. Now, um, this, you know, we introduced circuit breaking a couple of releases ago. Circuit breaking is a client side feature. So circuit breaking says, if I, as a client, am talking to a server that's returning a lot of errors, then like just cut it out, like stop talking to it. This rate limiting is a server side feature. If a client is talking to me and talking too much, then cut it out. I have here what I've done, you know, this config is like for a global rate limit. We also have per client rate limits. And so you can start doing like kind of QoS games. Um, and, and it's pretty cool. Okay, now federated services. This is the one that I'm most excited about because this is where we get to like advance, I think, the state of the art a little bit. My, my example here is not quite as pretty, but if you imagine you have a cluster called West, North, East, uh, three, three clusters, you do the standard kind of multi-cluster linking between those three. Um, we can actually take that, we can now take that a step further and we can say, hey, I want you to treat every service on there um, with this name as kind of one union service. And then from the client perspective, if I'm sitting, sitting on the client, uh, on, on, the, on the West cluster in this case, and I talk to a service called BB-Federated, so the services are called BB, um, and it's the same, kind of the same service on each um, cluster. If I talk to the service called BB-Federated, well now I'm actually gonna load balance across all endpoints on all those clusters, including my own cluster, which means all of Linkerd's latency-based load balancing can help me pick the, the fastest endpoint. If a cluster dies, or if the service dies on the cluster, or if the service half dies on the cluster, the load balancing just sorts it out. So suddenly I have this really nice primitive for operating on clusters um, or, or on services that are replicated across clusters. Now there's still some you know, refinement we can do here, uh, I'm sure the first thing you're asking is like, well, it's called BB-Federated, it sounds terrible. Uh, you can use um, HTTP, right? You can use the Gateway API to like make an alias service and, you know, make that, you know, a better name, you know. And, and there's some config and stuff that we're introducing. But this is really exciting for me because I think um, we're, what we're seeing is kind of a change in the way that people do uh, multi-cluster, and that's one of the, the things to make it easier. We've got more fun stuff like that coming on the roadmap. All right, the other thing I announced is Linkerd is a sustainable project. This is a controversial one because I have to talk about the evil corporate backer of, of Linkerd, but Linkerd is developed, you know, I, I decided I'm just going to be really upfront about it. Linkerd is developed primarily by one company. That company is now profitable, and more importantly, it's profitable by selling Linkerd, basically. So that's really, really good for Linkerd. It means Linkerd has a future, has a long and glorious future. We've used that to add new maintainers, you know, increase velocity of output, 
all that stuff. So lots more to say that that's this is what I'm going to be, you know, getting yelled at in the uh, open source 2.0 panel on Friday. Um, but I think it's really uh, uh, positive for, for Linkerd as a whole. Okay, and then I have a quick, uh, how am I doing for time? I have a very quick housekeeping note and then I want to get to questions. Um, so this is, this is a model that we're following and uh, we've updated the docs to kind of like reflect this, but I just want to talk it through. So we are still releasing versions, right? We're talking about Linkerd 216, 217, 218, right? Those versions represent a bundle of features and they represent a bunch of docs, right? And that model still works for us. It's, it helps with development, helps focus our efforts. We also publish edge releases. Every edge release, unfortunately, has its kind of its own uh, naming scheme, which is like a chronological one. So 24.11.13, oh, I don't know why I put 13 there. That would be like the 13th edge release in November. <laughs> that would be pretty rare, um, since we usually do one a week. So edge releases have all the latest code. They've got the bug, fish, bug fixes, security patches. If you look at the release notes and you look at the like um, the Linkerd, you know, just on the GitHub kind of release notes, we actually mark those releases as recommended or not recommended after they've been kind of uh, you know floating in the community for a week or two. So if you stay behind edge releases by like two or three weeks, you get a pretty solid product. Um, and then when we talk about a, a specific version like 2.17, um, we actually will do, um, you know, we'll, we'll say, oh, if that corresponds to this edge release, and we'll, we'll tag we'll tag Git. So if you want to get Linkerd 2.17, you know exactly where to get it. Okay. Oh, gosh, I forgot about this. I got a roadmap. All right. I'll run through this. Uh, TLS origination, <clears throat> that'd be super fun. These are like all things we're kind of planning on working on in some capacity. Unordered list, so please tell me what you want. Ingress. It's going to be really exciting, um, and uh, I can't can't wait to ship an Ingress product. Windows support, definitely interesting for us. Um, mesh expansion for private networks. Right now, uh, we only support it for uh, kind of gateway. I'm sorry, for pod-to-pod um, -pod networks, um, flat networks. Uh, further multi-cluster improvements. With, there's so much more to do there. If you're familiar with the link object in, in Linkerd, you know, that thing works when you have two clusters. It starts getting really hairy when you have, like, 50 clusters you're trying to all... Uh, linked together. Spiffy inside the cluster, you know, that's uh, a lot of people have been asking for that, for better or for worse. Um, more configuration on federated services. Okay, uh, we're all here in the CNCF project pavilion, so come, you can, you know, if you want to yell at me in person or other maintainers, I'm right there, and then we have like, I don't know, two minutes for questions. All right, what? I've got seven minutes for questions? I've been rushing this whole time. I don't want to do seven minutes. Let's sit in silence for like four minutes, and then we'll have three, three for questions. All right, let's do questions. I saw one hand over there. If you shout it out, I'll repeat it, or you could brazenly step up to the mic. So my question is, uh, is it working? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the um, the egress network was an interesting. CR uh, is it a VLF aware configuration? Your question, it, was it a, a what configuration, the egress? Uh, the egress network. This thing where it says kind egress network? Yes. Yeah, so that's a, that is a, a Linkerd, like CRD that we've introduced that represents, I don't know, egress network, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, um, usually what we do, we have multiple egress networks per VRF. So is that can block or control all those networks. Ah, I see. So, like, what's the scope of this yes. thing? So, I think the way it works is we, we kind of did a little hack thing. Well, maybe it's not a hack. I don't know. This, but if you if you set the namespace as linkerd-egress, then it applies cluster-wide. But if you want to apply just to a namespace or just to a, a, a smaller scope, then you can use it, you know, put a specific namespace in there, and then you could have multiple egress kind of networks. This doesn't, this re represents poly, you know, it's like policy really over egress network more than anything else. Uh, just last question regarding the same resource. Um, is it just for the primary network or can be applied even for multis? Oh, okay. So this is like, you've got, you've got literally multiple like multiple. Networks. Yeah. Um, great question. I don't know the answer. Excellent question. But if you come find me at the maintainer thing, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll find someone who knows the answer. All right, let's do uh, left side of the room. Um, so My you left. mentioned about the uh, service profiles, and I did say we're using Linkerd, but we're getting into it. And so since we're kind of getting into it, should we 
not worry about service profiles and just go all in on the gateway API implementation? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I would start, if you're doing, if you're just getting into it today, I would just go straight to gateway API and just bite the bullet on that. Service profiles will be around forever, but like most of the new juicy features are really gonna be gateway API centric. And then just a small other question. You yeah. said the, the metrics, are those exposed by Linkerd and capturable by Prometheus or are they another? Yeah, okay, yeah awesome. no, that's exactly right. They're exposed the same way all the other Linkerd metrics are on a like slash metrics endpoints and prom format. They can be scraped by Prometheus and you know Grafana can then take it from there. Cool, thank you. Yeah, great question. All right, yes. Hello, uh, really good talk by the way. Uh, thank you. Great comedy. <laughs> Um, I was interested, you mentioned something about uh, policy audit uh, yes. at one point. Uh, so there's kind of two things. One, is that related to gateway API policy attachments? I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, then I'm just, I'm actually just curious. 80% about as to confidence on that answer. Yeah. I'm just curious as to what it is, if you could go a small bit more depth into what that policy audit is. Yeah, so um, you know, basically, it's it's just a mo it's a binary mode where you say, hey, for this authorization policy object, rather than enforcing it, so like if something violates a policy, you got to you know, A talks to B and it's not allowed to by the policy. Instead of enforcing it, allow it anyways, but log a message and like update a metric somewhere so that you know you have a policy that you've put in place that is being violated before you flip that thing on and, and potentially disrupt production traffic. Okay, and is this something it's like a dry run? Yeah, and is this something specific to uh, Linkerd's policy? I see it on the screen there, like your policy at Linkerd. Yes, uh, yeah, okay. it's it's okay. it's in there's like an authorization policy CRD that is specific to Linkerd that then like talks to all these gateway API types or references them, and I believe that's the level at which you set the uh, the audit mode. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. All right, over here. Uh oh, he's got a smile. Oh, yeah. He's got, a, a, got an a evil one. smirk. It's a tough one. Oh, boy. Uh, so mutual TLS, right? Okay. Uh, let's say we have a bunch of internal services that are all communicating over our IDC and mutual TLS. Is that something we can use with, you know, Linkerd and, and be able to expand on it so we don't have to, like, release all these tokens and de deploy them through Helm charts to all those individual services? You have a bunch of services that are... Say interconnected. That one interconnected. Uh -huh. Interconnected talking to an OIDC provider like Keycloak or something I like that. See. And sometimes with some services, you see annotations that you can apply, and then you're sticking your tokens in annotations, and that's poo-poo. Yeah, um, yeah. So Linkerd's mutual TLS is very selfish, and it really only works when a Linkerd proxy talks to another Linkerd, Linkerd proxy. Cost. It doesn't share its TLS keys. It doesn't try and like be a, you know, a, a, an externally usable TLS. It's okay. very, very selfish. We can't wrap a service with it or anything like that. Uh, that. You know, you can wrap it for like internal, you know, so other mesh services could talk to it, but you couldn't wrap it for like external access. Well, all internal inside the cluster, right? But uh, if these things were all speaking over TCP, TCP communication, yeah. then you could wrap it all in mutual TLS. Yeah, you just, you know, you wouldn't be using anything other than Linkerd's own TLS certificates okay. that it makes its own special way and doesn't share with anyone else. All right. Okay. So not exactly the, what I'm looking for. Thank right. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. All right. We've got 30 seconds remaining for one last question. This is going to be the most profound, astonishing question of the night. Ladies and gentlemen. You put on there uh, a bullet about ingress. What is, can you elaborate on that one is? In the oh, upcoming? yeah. Ingress. Okay. I got 20 seconds to answer. Um, <laughs> I would like to take Linkerd's functionality and extend it to how do we handle traffic coming in to the cluster. That's really all. That's really all that means. We're at the point now where, like, I think we're ready. Uh, we've been ready for a while. We've got the gateway API as kind of like the thing that is describing the feature of ingress. So, like, let's just plug those two things together. There's a lot more to it than, than that, is like my my perspective. Um, but yeah, that's that's what that means. Throw away your old ingress controllers. Linkerd is here. Yeah, yeah, replace those old worn out ingress controllers with beautiful new Linkerd at some point in the future.